Hi, I'm Meredith Lakeen, and this is my studio. Um, I have a couple different bodies of work that I've been kind of focusing on for the thesis. And um, I don't know, I'm going to let Elvin ask me some questions. And I have some questions from fellow students. So, uh, first question let's go. is uh, background, how did you find about the academy, and um, how you got here? Okay. Um, I found out about the Academy through a professor from undergrad. Uh, she was the figurative professor uh, at UGA where I, I went to school. And she, uh, she brought in some books one day, uh, Vincent Desiderio book and Stephen Assale, and I loved both of their, their works. So I went online and looked them up. and. I think, I don't know if it was rumored that they taught here or what, but um, I was intrigued and then I got on the website and I loved all the work that I saw and um, just kind of did some more research and then I came up here and Elvin gave me a tour and I was really, really impressed. Um, and I think I, I remember seeing uh, some drawings people did and like an Eric Fischel master class and um, I was, I don't know, I just was really attracted to the artists that were affiliated with the school. Okay. So, so show me what you're on. Um, well right now I'm working on this large self-portrait and, um, and this piece as well. They're both part of a new series that I just uh, developed that's based off of um, nightmares. So Elena, who is a fellow student, she has um, had nightmares about not being able to scream. So this was my interpretation of, of that. And I'm, it's still kind of in the works. I'm not really sure what is going to happen in the background. And um, I I really love to render flesh and um, everything really meticulously. So it's it's getting there, but it still has a ways to go. And then the self-portrait. Um, when I was little, I was terrified of aliens. <laughs> so I I put myself in this field, and there's actually going to be UFOs coming to get me in the background. <laughs> um, and I don't know, I, I just wanted them both to be sort of, uh, I don't know, kind of cheesy in a way, but also arresting and sort of, I guess, psychological. Um, and I, I had just come out of doing all of these kind of deep, dark, uh, altarpiece paintings and I was sick of working so dark and um, I wanted to do something big and have more breathing room and this is kind of just what happened. I don't know why they're so creepy but <laughs> I, I don't know what happened to me here. <laughs> talk to me about your altarpieces. Um, well, here I'll, you come back. Um, I was drawn to, or I've always sort of been drawn to shaped canvases um, and to like Renaissance altar pieces, sort of the Gothic um, pointed arch. Uh, so I, I wanted to do a series with the shape and it was really um, focused on trying to use the shape and my like meticulous technical uh, I don't know m my technique to elevate what uh, what I was depicting in the painting um, and I was looking at like the old Dutch masters like still life painters such as um, like Peter Klaas and um, I've been copying a Rembrandt at the Met so I uh, learned a lot, or I've been learning a lot from that. Um, 
and I looked at him a lot when I was working on this kind of stuff. But uh, I don't know, I just went, I wanted the altar pieces to really elevate the subject matter and um, I want them to sort of glow from within. And I learned so much from working on these. I did them last semester. So what is life like as a student at the New York Academy? Well, it's wonderful and it's tough. The first year was really, really rough, to be honest. It was, um, I mean, amazing. I, I learned so much, but uh, it's really intense. And I didn't even realize how much I'd, I'd learned until, I think, this past summer when I, well, I really didn't paint much, to be honest. But um, when I came back, it was like, where did all of this come from? I just really kind of developed my technique and I think I've improved a lot. So, a whole lot. Who are some of your favorite artists and why? Um, gosh, I have a lot. Um, I love Stephen Asael because I love the way his figures, uh, they're so luminous. He captures, the way he captures the light is incredible. Um, I I love Andrew Wyeth and Bo Bartlett. They kind of go hand in hand. They have inspired this painting, really. Uh, Bo Bartlett, especially, his sort of epic uh, American landscapes, and they're just I don't know. There's so much. I've said it before. So much breathing room in his pieces, and I think it's really nice. Um, who else? I love Rembrandt. Um, I love Caravaggio. I have I have lots of favorites. Do <laughs> you have some questions from students? Um, yeah, I do have a couple students. Your fellow classmates. Yes. Okay, Emily, uh, who's right around the corner, asked, "What artist? Well, we just kind of talked about this. Mm -hmm. What artist is your biggest inspiration?" technique-wise and as far as your shaped canvases go. Uh, well, I kind of just touched on a lot of my favorite artists and Bo Bartlett and Wyeth and this one. And the shaped canvases, there's not really a particular artist that inspired them. It was more like a um, period in art. Um, so, I'll go on to another one since I kind of already did that one. Um, Diana, who's also right around the corner, asked, what are you trying to, well, this, this, the way Elena wrote this isn't actually what she was trying to get at, but basically she was asking me um, what I was trying to convey with these sort of, uh, all these figures that are in a solitary space and they're standing alone and sort of looking straight at the viewer. And um, I, I think I did this. I'm always drawn to sort of, uh, you know, a frontal gaze. I think it's, it kind of stops you in your tracks. And uh, it's usually, I don't know, it, it makes you really address what you're looking at and think about the psychology of uh, sort of the figure that's depicted. Um, and I think that a frontal gaze also, aside from this, this painting, because she, uh, she looks kind of scared. <laughs> but in these, there's, uh, I think there's kind of a strength in that, you know, sort of, it's almost an aggressive thing to look someone straight in the, in the eyes. Um, so, I guess I was trying to convey strength and uh, just a psychological connection. And, let's see, Guno asked me, uh, does the school provide sufficient anatomical classes and has that helped you? Um, 
I think the school definitely provides sufficient anatomical classes. Um, I have taken the anatomy track at school, which means that I think you have to take four um, anatomy classes while you're here. And um, I don't know, it really, it gives you such a fuller understanding of, of the form um, to know what's underneath. Uh, especially last semester I took advanced ecrochet, which this is an ecrochet. It's kind of a process where you build up the figure from the skeleton and then put on the musculature. And um, I did the face and the forearm last semester, and the face especially was uh, really, really helpful. It, I, I always had problems with the mouth, and uh, it really helped me understand what was going on underneath. Um, and then this, this one I'm working on now, and um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's something that I've always wanted to do to really understand what's going on beneath the skin, and it's definitely something they push and provide at the academy. Tell me about that work you have. This one? Yeah. Well, uh, it's kind of funny, actually. Um, I, well, I'm going to have to swing you around first. This wall over here by my locker, um, I, I would clean my brushes off on the wall, and uh, I had a critique with Margaret Boland, one of my painting professors, and she was really drawn to that wall. Uh, in fact, she wanted me to take it to my final crit <laughs> as like an installation piece. And um, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of interesting as well. She suggested that I do some little abstract pieces kind of using that same technique. So I kind of just keep these little canvas, well it's not a canvas, but little panels next to me as I'm painting and kind of play around with them. Um, and it's just, it's a completely different, I'm using a completely different part of my brain. It's really, really kind of fun and refreshing. But that's pretty much the gist of it. <laughs> Your this is my palette. Um, it's it usually is not this messy. I've been blocking in a lot of uh, these larger uh, color masses in this painting. So I usually work really. I have little teeny blobs of paint, and uh, I I work really meticulously. But um, I use about say about 12 or 13 colors and um, no black mostly actually mostly warms and a few few blues I like transparent colors because I, I do a lot of glazing so um, that's that's the palette hmm. what are your plans um, after the academy? Uh, after the academy well, I'm actually getting married on June 11th, uh, and then after that, um, I don't know, I'd like to get some shows, maybe get into a gallery, well, definitely eventually get into a gallery, um, and I want to teach. So I'm just going to kind of put my feelers out there, and we might move back to New York, and it's, I mean, there's such a great uh, network here at the school uh, and it's kind of, I don't know, I think it would be a shame to move away and, and not take advantage of all the resources and the people that I've met. I mean, it's a great, great way to put yourself out there to, I don't know, talk to like-minded people and there's just a lot of opportunities. Tell a quick story about something really cool that happened during your time here at the academy. Uh, 
Well, I, I could tell the story about my shoulder. <laughs> it wasn't cool, but it's kind of a funny story. Um, I, a couple weeks ago, I was working on this painting, and I was flipping it around. Uh, it was, I, sometimes I flip my paintings uh, you know, horizontally so I can have fresh eyes and just look at it as shapes instead of thinking about the form. But anyway, so I, I tried to turn it back over by myself, and it's pretty heavy. And uh, it started to fall this way out from the wall, and I tried to grab it with my shoulder, and it popped out of socket. So uh, I walked down the hall and, and found some friends to help me out, and a couple hours later, I was out of the hospital, and everything was back in place. So. What do you think is the best resource that the school provides? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I think I have a couple. Um, definitely the, the fact that the professors are, uh, you know, successful figurative artists and everyone is sort of, uh, I mean, it's, there's kind of a diverse faculty, but everyone's focused on the figure and, uh, I, I didn't have that at my undergrad. Um, so that's that's a big, big plus. Um, and then the fact that all of the artists that are professors here have successful careers. And, you know, I mean, we can go to shows and see their work, and they bring in studies and demos. And it's just to have that hands-on kind of look at their work, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and then just the, the things that the Academy does to sort of promote the students, I think is really one of a kind, um, like the Tribeca Ball. And uh, they're constantly bringing people in to look at our work. And um, you know, the visiting, visiting artists are great. And a couple weeks ago, we had uh, Eric Fischel and Steve Martin come in and critique some of the students' work, and I, I don't think that happens uh, anywhere else, really. So, um, I don't know. I think the school just does a really good job of um, promoting us and kind of exposing us to all kinds of different people. Okay, thank you. We'll let you get back to work. Okay, see you later. Bye.